Hi dear students, welcome to Candle IAS. In this lecture, we shall be discussing a topic in current affairs in environment and ecology. This topic will be useful for both prelims as well as your main examination. Wetland ex situ conservation establishment. Recently, the Rajasthan government proposed to construct a zoo inside the Kolodio National Park. We already know that the Kolodio National Park is a world heritage site which is also popularly known as Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. And in this we can find a wide range of wetland species. So what is the purpose of this WESCE that is Wetland ex situ conservation establishment. What do we mean by ex situ and in situ? Ex situ means outside of the natural habitat. Say for example, if you are going to conserve a tiger inside the forest, say a national park, then it is in situ conservation. Whereas if you are going to keep the tiger inside a zoological park or inside a zoo, then there if you are going to conserve it, then it is called as ex situ conservation. Okay, this is the difference between in situ and ex situ. In situ means in the natural habitat of that animal or bird, whereas ex situ means outside of the natural habitat. So, I hope you understood what we mean by in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. So, the topic which we are discussing now is wetland ex situ conservation establishment. So, W E S C E. This is a zoo. Okay. This is proposed by the Rajasthan government. So, they are planning to establish a zoo inside the Kolodia National Park. So, we know that Kolodia National Park is a, a famous world heritage site and it is also known as Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary. So, what is the purpose of making this zoo? Okay. So, the purpose of this zoo is to display a wide range of wetland species including rhinos, water buffaloes, crocodiles, dolphins and various other exotic species. Okay, so inside this Colodio National Park, they are going to construct a zoo which is going to display a wide variety of exotic species and wetland species including water buffaloes, rhinos and so on. Now, According to this detailed project report of the Rajasthan Forestry and Biodiversity Development Project, which in short we call it as RFBDP, what is the aim of this ex situ conservation project or the construction of the zoo or the development of the zoo inside the Kolodia National Park? This is to rejuvenate the biodiversity of the Kolodia National Park thereby boosting its universal values. Okay, they say why they are going to develop the zoo is with the intention of boosting the universal values of the Colodio National Park. And this WESCE is part of the ambitious RFBDP that is the Rajasthan Forestry and Biodiversity Development Project. So, the funding for this is coming from the French government. So, they have agreed to agreed to fund up to rupees 12 crore over a period of 8 years. Okay. So, with this funding, they are going to develop a zoo inside the Colodia National Park to boost the universal values of the national park wherein they are going to exhibit and display a wide range of wetland species and exotic species. So, that is the purpose of this. W E S C E. So, what are the other facilities which would be available over here? They are planning to create a breeding and a reintroduction center for the locally extinct species. So, what are the extinct species? The species which were once upon a time prevalent in this region, but now they are either present in very few numbers or they are totally absent. That is what we mean by extinct species, right? So, the extinct species like fishing cats, otters, black bugs, hog, deers. So, they are going to create a breeding ground and a reintroduction center for all these ex extinct species 
so that their numbers will increase. Okay, that is also one of the reasons. Then in addition to that, they are going to create an aquarium for the indigenous species. What do we mean by indigenous species? Indigenous species means native species. That is the species which are native to that particular habitat or region. That is what we mean by indigenous species. So here they are the gangetic dolphin, crocodiles and they are also going to create separate enclosures for large wetland species like the Indian rhino, water buffaloes, barasinga which is the swamp deer and so on. Okay, so these are the facilities which are supposed to be planned inside the Colodia National Park. So in the backdrop of this, so we know that this is the news which is in current affairs, right? That is the WESE is going to be established in the Colodia National Park. In the background of this, we need to have some idea about what is Colodio National Park, what is the significance of that and we should also have a very good understanding of the wetlands, the different wetlands in our country and so on. Because in UPSC, usually the questions from current affairs do not come from the current affairs topic as such. Instead, it will be interlinked with the topics which we have to study from that background, right? So as part of that, we will also discuss the Colodio National Park. We know that Colodia National Park is a wetland and it is a very famous bird sanctuary. It is located in Bharatpur, Rajasthan and it is a renowned UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is one of the most important bird watching centers in the world, right? If you are a bird watcher, definitely you would have visited Colodia National Park by now. So, uh, in Nadi, the Chilika Lake in Orissa and Colodia National Park in Rajasthan were the first to be recognized as Ramsar sites in India as early as 1981. Okay, so these two places that is Chilika Lake in Orissa and Kolodio National Park in Bharatpur, Rajasthan were declared as Ramsar sites in India as early as 1981. And currently Kolodio National Park and Loktak Lake in Manipur are in Montreux record. Okay. And Colodia National Park is very well known for its rich avian diversity that is the diverse number of birds which are present in this region and it is home to over 365 species of birds including rare and threatened species such as the Siberian crane. So here in this image you can see the location of here you can see the location of the Colodia National Park. So this is the Siberian crane here. So Colodio National Park is known for its rich biological diversity and it hosts thousands of birds, especially during the winter season. And it is also notified as the bird sanctuary in 1956 and it was established as a national park in 1982 and it is a world heritage site. It is a man-made and man-managed wetland and it is of international importance because it is recognized as Ramsar site in 1981 and it is a very important region where birds migrate from Central Asia during the extreme cold climatic conditions say take for example the Siberian crane so this bird migrates all the way from Siberia to this Colodia National Park during the extreme cold climatic conditions in Siberia. That is why this is of utmost biological importance and it is a rich biodiversity hotspot. So there are various different species of uh, birds from far flung areas in the northern hemisphere which visit the sanctuary especially for the purpose of breeding. The Siberian crane is one good example. Okay, so the Siberian crane you can find it in this region during the breeding season. At the time of inscription, it was the wintering ground for the critically endangered Siberian crane and it is also the habitat for a large number of resident nesting birds as well. So the Colodio National Park is the only park in India that is completely enclosed by a 2 meter high boundary wall that minimizes the possibilities of any encroachment inside the park. Okay. So, there are also a few concerns that have been raised for the development of this WESE inside the Colodia National Park. What are those concerns? First and foremost, we already discussed that 
that it is a breeding ground for a large number of birds right so now experts have raised questions about the proposed zoo coming up so what will it going to disturb will it be a disturbance for the migratory birds which are migrating from different parts of the northern hemisphere to this region during the breeding season so this is the concern which they have raised so whether it is going to cause a disturbance in the migration of the birds to this region and again because of this concern the forest department has decided to move the construction project of this zoo some 1 to 2 kilometers away from the national park boundary so that there is adequate where there is adequate forest land so that it can prevent any sort of dis disturbances that can happen to these migratory birds so as part of this topic we also need to have a good understanding about what are wetlands what are the different wetlands which are present in our country what is the uh, speciality of each of these wetlands which rivers are present over here what is the confluence of the rivers over there and the geography of that region including the flora fauna the climatic conditions these are the topics from where you can get questions in your preliminary examination so to help you in this part i have made a complete lecture on wetlands and i have posted it on our app so complete lecture on wetlands and the significance of each of these wetlands including the flora fauna geography and so on is available on our app so to access those videos you have to download our app called candela ias okay so now coming to the wetlands conservation and management rules so the ministry of environment and forest and climate change has notified the wetlands rules in 2016 sorry 2017 and under the provisions of the environment protection act 1986 a regulatory framework for conservation and management of wetlands is present in india this is a significant step to conserve manage and maintain the ecological character of the wetlands without restricting the without restricting the wise use further we also have a legal framework for environmental concerns and also to strengthen the institutional framework to the state and the union territory wetland authorities and the national wetland committee so the wetland rules have enhanced the focus of management of wetlands from a central authority to the state bodies okay so this is what we call it as decentralization isn't it instead of keeping the conservation of the wetlands under the central government's total control it has been delegated to the states and the union territories okay the rules also provide for an advisory role of the national wetland committee to guide the state bodies on the integrated management of wetlands based on the wise use principle and also to review the progress of the integrated management of ramsar convention sites among other roles further in addition to the lecture on wetlands i am also adding few more lectures of which are of utmost importance for your prelims as well as mains from environment and ecology perspective so all these lectures will be available on the app and for more such informative lectures you can also like share subscribe and follow and do not forget to download the app for much detailed lectures on all the topics of environment and ecology until we meet in the next lecture take care bye have a good day